us and praise for his blessings. My dear brothers and sisters, our scripture reading was taken from Mark, Mark 7 verse 9. Mark chapter 7 verse 9. That's where our scripture was taken. And um, it is the day that Yahweh has made. And uh, Mark chapter 7 verse 9 is just one verse that is powerful and it has a lot of meaning. Mark chapter 7 verse 9 says, And we read, And he said unto them, Full well, ye reject the commandments of Elohim, that ye may keep your own tradition. Right now here, my dear brothers and sisters, Yahshua is telling a set of people that they reject the commandments of Yahweh and they are keeping the old traditions that has no significance. It holds no weight for salvation. And in our day-to-day -day life, if we take a good look at life today and everything that is going on, my dear brothers and sisters, we can see clearly that people are participating and partaking in things that are established by man and not by Yahweh. But we need to be extremely and very careful because, my dear brothers and sisters, everything that Yahweh established, everything that Yahweh put in place, Mr. Hassan has a counterfeit and something to oppose the things of Yahweh. We need to be very careful. Today, if you meet someone on the street and you ask that person, what date on the calendar is more important to you? What day on the calendar would be more important to you? You would be surprised to hear what many people would say, my dear brothers and sisters. Many people would tell you, some would say Christmas Day, some would say Valentine's Day, some would say Halloween, some would say birthday, Mother's Day, Father's Day, some would say, some would even say the days that someone died, a loved one died, the mother, the father. A loved one died. So my dear brothers and sisters, there are many holidays, many days people observe, many days people keep. But we need to understand that most of these days that people keep, they have nothing to do with salvation. They will take you straight to hell because ignorantly we might you might be you might be worshipping the devil in secret or ignorantly without knowing. My dear brothers and sisters, we need to take heed, we need to be extremely careful because today the world has been contaminated and been controlled by men in high powers and high offices that have led the children of Yahweh astray. The scriptures that we are reading right now, my dear brothers and sisters, these scriptures are being interpreted in ways that would lead the children astray and that would go back to the, to the scripture reading, ignoring, denying the word of Yahweh, the Ten Commandments, the commandments of Yahweh, the precepts of Yahweh, just for man to do their own. Dear brothers and sisters, we need to take heed. We need to be very careful because a lot of these holidays, so-called holidays, they are not holy because the root word there would be holy. A lot of these days that man observes is not holy day. It is pagan day. That's right. My dear brothers and sisters, the devil has used man to establish these days and we need, as the children of Yahweh, take heed. In Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy, we are going to be very short today. In the book of Deuteronomy, it made it clear. Okay? 
It made it clear to us that we should not learn the way of the heathens. Because surprisingly, these holidays are established to worship idols. For example, Christmas. Christmas is not the birth of Yahshua. We all know that. And they celebrate Christmas. But Christmas was already being celebrated even before the birth of Yahshua. Then they celebrate Easter. They say it's the resurrection of Yahshua. And we know that Yahshua spent three days and three nights in the belly of the earth. And he died in the midst of the week. The midst of the week, which is the Wednesday, the middle of the week. So there are seven days in a week. The middle of seven would fall on the fourth day. So Yahshua died on the fourth day. And then man come and they say he was resurrected. He was risen on the Sunday, which is the first day of the week. So my dear brothers and sisters, we need to be careful with these pagan days. These pagan days are enemy of salvation. Who estab whoever established these days, they are enemy of salvation. And these days, my dear brothers and sisters, has nothing in them to lead us unto Yahweh. We need to be very careful and we need to understand that there are always counterfeits. There are fake and false doctrines and these holidays, Thanksgiving, Halloween, Christmas, New Year's, these days are just in place for people to worship false Elohims, which are idols. These days are actually automatically causing us to break the first commandment Yahweh has put in place, which is, you shall have no other Elohim before him. Don't you ever think that these days people just have them there just for fun, my dear brothers and sisters. Everything we do or say will have an impact on our salvation. Every single thing you and I do or say has an impact on our salvation. So you need to be careful with the things you do and the things you say. Don't ever think that it's of no value. Don't ever believe that it is of nothing. Everything we do or we say will have an effect on our salvation. So we will go and we will take a look at some of those days that Yahweh has placed for us to celebrate. The holidays, which are the holy days. Hallelujah. The days that man has established are not holy days. They are satanic days, devilish days, and they come and they call them holy days. H O L Y is holy. If you drop the Y to add a suffix at the end, you have to drop the Y and put an I, which made it holy day holiday so they call it holiday but we should not call what is not righteous righteous we should not call what is not good good there are things my dear brothers and sisters there are things of Yahweh and there are things of man and there are things that are contrary to the word of Yahweh and the devil has used man to establish these things they are called customs and traditions of man that will lead man astray that will send man straight to hell they have been used to control man. And there is one thing we need to take into consideration. Slavery. During the days of slavery, the white man had a lot to do with contaminating the scriptures. We are not being racist, but we are being real. The white man used a lot of things to control man. So they came with their own interpretation of the scripture. And they came with their own traditions. And they led a lot of people astray. Right. For example, the word Jesus. There has never been a J in the Hebrew alphabet. But during the time of slavery, the white man held the Bible. And he told the black man, enter into Jesus. And you will be saved. The first slave ship, if 
you google it the first slave ship is called Jesus you can never see a black Jesus it's only white Jesus this is not of Yahweh let us not go into the traditions of man let us not put aside the commandments of Yahweh and go into the traditions of man. Because I can tell you, my dear brothers and sisters, the tradition of man will lead you astray. Oh, yes. Yahweh gave our forefathers days that we should observe. Yahweh gave our leaders, our elders, the days that should be observed. And we, our, we the children of Yahweh, the true worshippers, we need to follow these days. In the Bible, the Torah, the Old Testament, the First Testament, there are seven feast days, seven festivals, seven holy days, not pagan days, holy days that are appointed by Yahweh for us to observe. Hallelujah. You don't hear that. Just a few people, a few people talk about these days. Some might say it has been fulfilled, but the scripture said throughout all your generations, you must keep these days. Hallelujah. My dear brothers and sisters, we can prove all things through scripture. And that is why I always tell you, my dear brothers and sisters, that we should study to show ourselves approved unto Yahweh. We have to dedicate ourselves to the things of Yahweh. We have to make time to study. Because we were all, almost every one of us were brought up in pagan religions. Oh, yes. We were brought up celebrating Christmas. We were brought up going to purchase clothes, our best outfit, our best clothes for the 25th of December. We were brought up purchasing clothes for the new year, the claim which is in January. But my dear brothers and sisters, January is not the first month of the biblical year. That's right. We need to be extremely careful. January is the first month of the pagan year, but not of the righteous people's year. Hallelujah. The first year starts in spring. The first month of the year, it starts in spring. When the children of Yahweh left Egypt, the Israelites left Egypt, they left Egypt in the first month of the year, which is in spring. Now, how do you know when a month starts? A month starts when the new moon comes. How do you know when the new moon comes? The new moon comes not when there is darkness, like science would say. The new moon comes when there is a crescent in the moon. So we have to keep watch. We have to be extremely careful. And let us not put aside the commandments of Yahweh to follow the doctrines or traditions of man. Yahshua said it in chapter 7 of Mark verse 9. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of Yahweh, that ye may keep your own traditions. Which one do you want to choose? The traditions of men or the commandments of Yahweh? What do you want to choose? And then when we go to Leviticus chapter 3, 23, Leviticus chapter 23 will take us to the days that we, the children of Yahweh, should keep. Not the days that those pagans have established. We are supposed to keep the days that Yahweh has recommended us to keep. If you call any other day a holy day, Apart from the day that is in the scripture and is backed up by scripture, you are committing a sin. Hallelujah. You should only keep the day that Yahweh has asked us to keep. Leviticus chapter 23, and it reads, And Yahweh speaks.
speak unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feast of Yahweh, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocation, even these days are my feast. So we see in verse 1, it says, These days, and it will mention the days in verse 2, are his feasts. His feasts. Not pagan feasts. Not man's feasts. But these are the feast days of Yahweh. The festivals. The holy days. The holy days of Yahweh. And here the important part. Which ye shall proclaim to be holy covenant. Holy convocation. Even these days are my feasts. So holy convocation. On these days, we must convocate. We must come together as the children of Yahweh to worship, to celebrate these days. Hallelujah. These days are feast days. Not many people preach that anymore. Not many people. They say the feast don't exist anymore. My dear brothers and sisters, we have to keep the feast. Hallelujah. These feast days, we have to keep them. Verse 2. Verse 3. Six days shall work be done. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. And holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of Yahweh. In all your dwelling. Six days you shall do all your works. Now listen carefully. Six days you shall do all your works. The week has seven days. And the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh. In it no work shall be done. So this is established that on the seventh day you shall do no work. Yes, to abide. No work must be done on the seventh day. This is established by scripture and it is a feast day. So today is a day of celebration. Today is a festival. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's why we rejoice and we celebrate on this day. This day is a day of celebration. Hallelujah. This day is a festival. This day is a feast. Hallelujah. We give you our thanks and praise for the Sabbath, the seventh day Sabbath. Hallelujah. In it, you shall do no work. This is the day of rest. Hallelujah. Blessings be to Yahweh for the Sabbath. I love the Sabbath day. Rest. All the days of the week I work hard. And Yahweh asked me one day to honor him, to give him thanks and give him everything. I will not do it. And he has my life in his hands. Mm, okay. He can just delete me. Mm -hmm. He can turn off that switch and to my goodness. The split of a second is not a promise. So let's continue. Verse 3 says, Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. He shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of Yahweh in all your dwelling. Some people... You know what some people do right now? They go and they say they keep the lunar Sabbath. They keep the Sabbath every when the new moon falls. They take that day as the day for Sabbath. I have not seen it in the scripture. The scripture made it clear that the seventh day is the Sabbath. Because I know every seventh day you have to keep the Sabbath day. Holy is the Sabbath. Every seventh day is the Sabbath. If today new moon falls on Sunday, they keep it every Sunday. Now, they need to be extremely careful because the following new moon can fall on a Wednesday. Is there a seventh day gap? There is not seven days. It said the seventh day. And let's keep in mind it's a feast. So we should always rejoice. We should always celebrate on that day, which is the Sabbath day, the seventh day of Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So verse 4. 
These are the feasts of Yahweh, even holy convocations, which he shall proclaim in the seasons. Hallelujah. So, it is going down to another section. It put the Sabbath day, the seventh day by itself, specially. Don't touch that. You cannot touch that thing. You have to keep that Sabbath day. Every yeah, single yeah. week, you have to keep that day. So it comes down to verse 4, and it is being very specific. He said, These are the feasts of Yahweh. Even holy convocation, we must convocate. We have to come together on that day, on these days. So let's go down to see which days he's talking about. And then what? Which shall, which ye shall proclaim in the seasons. In the seasons. There is a season for these days, my dear brothers and sisters. That's right. These days are to be kept, are to be observed, are to be celebrated at the appointed time in the due season. In the 15th day, verse 5, in the 15th day, on, in the 15th day of the first month, between the evenings is Yahweh's Passover. Right now, we're in the Old Testament. But the following Sabbath, because we will be doing this message in series, like a series, we can't do everything today. We will be taking you through these days one by one, individually. And we will show you where, with scriptures, where both Old and New Testaments have scriptures to support these feast days. Hallelujah. So my dear brothers and sisters, verse 5 said, in the 14th day of the first month, between the evenings is Yahweh's Passover. Right now, my dear brothers and sisters, there is no more a Passover, but there is a memorial meal. If you could remember in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, when Yahshua came, that he came as the Passover lamb, and he died for our sins, and this is what we are going to observe in place of Passover, the memorial meal, eating and drinking of Yahshua's body and blood, which is symbolized or represented by bread and the fruit of the vine, which is Hallelujah. juice, grape juice or wine. In the 14th day, verse 5, in the 14th day of the first month between evenings, the evenings is Yahweh's Passover. So we have to establish which month is the first month. The first month usually starts in spring. Spring is the beginning of everything. The beginning, you watch outside in the time of spring, you see the trees are budding again. You would have birds singing, babies singing, baby birds singing. Why? Because they have newborns. Everything comes new during spring. If you go and you watch the ballet, you would see ballet would be in the air. The beginning of all things starts in spring. Verse chapter verse 6. And on the 15th day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread unto Yahweh. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. On the 14th day is the feast of Passover. The feast of memorial meal. But after that day, there is the feast of unleavened bread. Seven days we shall not eat leaven. Have you seen that on the calendars on your cell phones? Have you seen that on the calendars that they sell at the stores? Do you see that on your diary? You have diaries and they have calendars. Do you see that? If you go on your computer on the left and the right hand side, the bottom right hand side, you click, 
You get your date, your day and calendar time. Do you see these days? Mm -hmm. These days, a lot of pagan organizations don't support these days. Right. But the scripture has what is recommended for us to keep. We have to keep these days, my dear brothers and sisters. These days are the holidays. Not Christmas. Christmas is not a holiday. Christmas is a pagan day. Yes. Not Easter. Easter is not a holiday. It can't be holy. That's not holy. Halloween is not a holiday. Thanksgiving is not a holiday. Mother's Day and Father's Day are not holidays. You understand, my brother? These days are not holy. That's right. They are pagan days. Hallelujah. So let us keep in mind that we should not reject the commandments or if not the commandments of Yahweh just to keep man's tradition. Because every one of these days they have they are dedicated and put in place to worship idols. They are not put in place to worship Yahweh. Do not celebrate these days. That's right. These days are not of Yahweh. They are not of Yahweh, but they are of the devil. Mm -hmm. First commandment tells you have no other Elohim before him. And these holidays they have, these so-called holidays, which are not holidays, but pagan days, have us ignorantly worshipping those false Elohims. Mm -hmm. You observe them, you celebrate them, you are actually automatically breaking the first commandments and the ten commandments. Mm -hmm. You are having an other Elohim before Yahweh. And the scripture made it clear. We shall have no other Elohim before Yahweh. Verse 6. And on the fifteenth day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread unto Yahweh. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. Like I said, we're going to deal with everything today. To next week, we are going to deal with some. We are going to deal with it piece by piece. Every Saturday, we're going to deal with one or two. And we have scriptures to back it up and we will know how to observe these days. To celebrate. Hallelujah. It's a day of celebration. Not a day of mourning. But a day of celebration. It's a feast. A festival. Hallelujah. For Yahweh. And we have to keep these days. In the first, we go to verse 7, in the first day, the first day of the seven days after, so, okay, let's read. In the first day, ye shall have an holy convocation. Ye shall do no seven work therein. Mm -hmm. There are seven days we have to put aside after the fourteenth day. After the fourteenth day in the first month, the fourteenth day is Passover. Then the fifteenth day begins the seven days of unleavened bread. Hallelujah. So from the fifteenth day, you count seven days. And on the seventh, on the fifteenth day, which is the first day of the seven days set apart to keep seven days of unleavened bread, this day has to be a holy convocation. The children of Yahweh have to come together and celebrate, bring food, bring water, bring drinks, and let us sing, let us dance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It Hallelujah. is a day of celebration. Hallelujah. Of serving Yahweh's blessings. We have to keep these days holy. And they are called high day Sabbaths. And there, I'll tell you something. There, in the, in, in, during the death of Yahshua, that many people are confused. These days are Sabbaths. They are high day Sabbaths. Mm -hmm. And on the day that Yahshua died was a high day. Mm -hmm. So, there was, it was a preparation day, I'm sorry. It was a preparation day for a high day. So he died on the 14th day and he he died on the 14th day. And the following day would have been the 15th day. So there the scripture said, on the preparation day he died. I am telling you today, brothers and sisters, we have the 7th day Sabbath, but the other 
six days are Sabbaths also, high days. So on the 14th day was the preparation of the 15th day. The 14th day was the preparation of feast of unleavened bread. So that's when they got confused and they thought it was talking about the weekly Sabbath. It was not talking about the weekly Sabbath. No way. So, let's continue because you know, we have to go. Verse 8. But he shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh seven days. In the seventh day is an holy convocation. Ye shall do no seven work. So, another day again, the seventh day. So remember 15th? From the fifth to fifteenth, you call you, you put aside seven days from the fifteenth day. So the fifteenth is a high Sabbath, holy convocation. You must come together and worship. Seven. So 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and on the twenty-one day. You have seven days. On the twenty-first day of that month, you have to come again for an other celebration. It is a high day Sabbath, holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. Verse nine, and Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them. When ye be come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, ye then ye shall bring a sheave of the first fruit of your harvest unto the priest. And ye shall wear the sheave before Yahweh, and to be accepted for you on the morrow after the Sabbath. The priest shall wear it. And ye shall offer the day when, and ye shall offer that day when ye wave the sheaf and hilam without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering unto Yahweh. Yahshua has taken the place of all Islam. And a meal offering thereof shall be two tenth deals of fine mint, fine flour mingled with oil. An offering made by fire unto Yahweh for a sweet savor, and the drink offering thereof ye shall be of wine for the fourth part of an hen, and ye shall eat neither bread nor parched corn nor green corn nor green ears until the self same day that ye brought an offering unto your Elohim. It shall be a statute. Forever throughout your generations in all your dwelling. This is the most important part here, my dear brothers and sisters. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwelling. Forever. Forever. Mm -hmm. It is perpetual. Forever. Hallelujah. Not for tomorrow alone. Forever. But at its appointed time. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go down. Verse 15. And ye shall count unto you from the morrow, after the Sabbath, from the day that he brought the sheave of the wave offering, that ye brought the sheave of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. So, you have to count seven Sabbaths after that feast. Seven Sabbaths, seven seven-day Sabbaths, seven weekly Sabbaths. You have to count seven weekly Sabbaths. We must count seven weekly Sabbaths, even unto seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Even unto the morrow after the Sabbath shall ye number fifty days, and ye shall offer a new meal offering unto Yahweh. So, 
When you count seven Sabbaths after that Sabbath, you have to count 50 days. And on that 50 day, automatically would give you seven Sabbaths. Hear what goes down and hear what we have to observe. These are not those pagan days, you know. These are not those pagan days that man have put on earth to observe. This is not Mother's Day or Father's Day, you know. Mm -hmm. These are holy, holy, holy days. These are not pagan days. These are holy days. You shall bring out your habitations to wave loaves of two tenths deal. They shall be of fine flour. They shall be beckoned with leaven. They are the first fruits unto Yahweh. And ye shall offer uh, with the bread seven lambs without blemish of the first year. And on your bullock, and, uh, and one young bullock, and two rams, they shall be for a burnt offering unto Yahweh. With the meal offering and the drink offering, even an offering made by fire of sweet savor unto Yahweh. Then ye shall sacrifice a kid of the goats for a sin offering, and two lambs of the first year for a sacrifice of peace offering. And the priest shall wave them with the bread of the first fruit for a wave offering before Yahweh with two lambs. They shall be holy to Yahweh for the priest. And he shall proclaim on the self same day that it may be an holy convocation unto you. Another holy convocation. Ye shall do no servant work. It shall be a statue forever in all your dwelling throughout your generations. And when ye reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not make clean radiance of your corners of your field when thou reapest neither shalt thou gather any grain of thy harvest thou shalt leave them unto the poor and to the stranger i am yahweh your elohim so this day is talking about going to new testament pentecost this day is talking about pentecost feast of weeks in the Old Testament, it was feast of weeks, chief with offering. But in the New Testament, on that day, the spirit of Yahweh, Rakodesh, came down Hallelujah. on the heads of men like tongues of fire. This is in today, day of Pentecost. So, if we watch carefully, everything that is done in the old, they have scripture to prove it in the new. Feast of weeks, backed up in New Testament, the book of Acts. <clears throat> Verse 23, and Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, Let's go down to the seventh month now. We are in the going, we are approaching the seventh month. In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall be, shall he have a Sabbath? So in the seventh month, the biblical seventh month, not July. July is not the seventh month biblically, my dear brothers and sisters and those viewing on, on social media. July is not the seventh month biblically. These pagan leaders came and they fooled us and told us a month start, the year starts in January. This is not it. Every new moon is a new month. How do you know it's a new moon? Keep looking for it, and when you see the moon is a crescent, just for a few hours or a few minutes in the sky, mark it, the first day of that month in particular. Every month starts with a new moon, not with a dark moon, but you have to see a crescent. How can it be new and you don't see it? <laughs> it can't be new. 
If you don't see it, it's not new. It has to be seen. So, for there to be something new, it has to go through a dark phase. So if you plant a seed, you bury it, it goes through its dark phase and it, 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 it germinates something new, which is called a new plant. So, if the, the moon new, the old moon goes through its dark phase and it brings in a new moon, you have to see the moon. If you go for, if a, for when man die, man go man buried into his dark phase in the tomb and then he resurrects to be a new man. They have to be a phase of darkness for the new things to come. So don't ever believe a new moon is when the place is dark. You have to see it for it to be a new moon. The crescent. Look for it. So then we are going down to verse 24. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing trumpets and holy convocation. So my brothers and sisters, there is a day for a memorial called Memorial Day of Blowing Trumpets, the Feast of Trumpet. And can my brother here, Brother Ken, can you demonstrate the blowing of trumpet? My, we, our brother Ken here is very, very good at blowing that <laughs> trumpet. Hallelujah. 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 Let him demonstrate a little. So we will be celebrating that feast very soon. Come closer, my brother. Come let the people online see you. Come at the front. In the seventh month is a memorial for blowing of trumpets. The seventh month, noon, the first day of the seventh month is the blow memorial of blowing of trumpets. Do you see that on your calendars? Mm -hmm. You don't see that. These are holy days. Not those pagan days they call holy days. Not those pagan days where they have people jumping. And you need to have some something. In all these holy days, in those pagan days, they're not holy days, I don't call them holy days. In all these pagan festivals, what do you observe? Every one of them dress in a way that is not acceptable. They drink rum. They drink rum, they do all kinds of things, and you need to understand that drunkard will never enter the kingdom of Yahweh. You have to repent if you are drunkard. Christmas Day, what do they celebrate? Eating of big swine, which is an unclean beast, and also drinking of rum, doing all kinds of abomination. These days are not holy. If these days were holy, why would you be eating an unclean beast? If these days are holy, why would people be drinking rum, getting drunk, not being sober? These days are not holy. We need to be extremely careful, dear brothers and sisters and social media viewers. We cannot observe these pagan days. The scriptures has made it clear to us which days are holy days and which days we as the children of Yahweh should observe. Leviticus chapter 23 has made it clear. And it's not only in Old Testament. That's right. It is also in the New Testament. Scriptures to back it up. Speak unto the children of Israel saying in the seventh month in the first day of the month shall ye have a sabbath a memorial blowing of trumpets and holy convocation blow trumpet festival day sing and pray by fire unto Yahweh this day the tenth day 
So we have on the first day of the month, the first day of the seventh month is blowing of trumpet. Hallelujah. Joyful, joyful. Rejoicing is a festival. The blowing of trumpets on the first day of the seventh month. And on that day, on the tenth day of that same month, is another feast, another festival. And hear what? It is not a day, a festival to come and eat and drink, you know, physical food. Man shall not live by bread alone. It is a day to feast on the word of Yahweh. A day of atonement. You feed yourself spiritually because we will be denying our bodies of physical food to be fed spiritually. This is what we do on atonement day. It is a holy convocation. We have to come together. We have to convocate. We have to convocate. Convocate. Ye shall do no civil work therein, but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh. The offering, the sacrifice has been made, it's Yahshua. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Also on the tenth day of this month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be an holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your soul, and offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh. And ye shall do no work, and ye shall do no work in that same day. For it is the day of atonement, to make an atonement for yourself before Yahweh, your Elohim. The day of atonement. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 29. For whosoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted. Listen to that, my dear brothers and sisters. For whosoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. Mm. Be careful. Mm. It doesn't have to be today. But you are shortening your days mm. when you don't keep the holy days of Yahweh. Hallelujah. I did not say it. Verse 29. For whosoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. You will be cut short. If you had to live a hundred years, maybe you live only twenty. Or maybe the same day you die. My dear brothers and sisters and viewers, let us keep these days that Yahweh has called us. Don't mind anybody coming and tell you you don't have to keep these days. It is scripture. Torah. Yahshua kept them. That's right. Yahshua kept these days. He kept them. If he didn't keep it, why would the scripture say on the preparation day he died? Preparation day for what? It was not the seventh day Sabbath. It was not the weekly Sabbath. It was the feast of unleavened bread. That was the preparation day. The preparation day was the preparation day of feast of unleavened bread. It was a high day Sabbath. So we have to keep this feast. Verse 40. And whosoever soul it is that doeth any work, merciful Father. Hey! Waka. Trouble. And whosoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the soul shall, oh, the soul will I destroy among those people. So my dear brothers and sisters, two things. You cannot work on that day and you should not eat on that day. Fast. Atone your soul. If you don't, hear what he say. If you don't atone, 
you will be cut short. If you walk, you will be cut short. I did not say it. The scriptures said it. The Bible made it clear. These, and you see, what, what is happening? You can't drink rum on that day. You cannot go and dance to all kind of worldly music on that day. This day is a holy day. These are the true holy days. That's right. Now, some people, you see, and watch what happens. Well, when they come with their pagan days, they call holidays. People don't even go to work on these days. <laughs> My goodness. That's right. They don't go to work. They don't go to work to engage in unrighteousness. But not to engage in things of Yahweh, you know. To engage in all kinds of unrighteousness. These pagan days are not holy days. Mm -hmm. If they are holy days, do what's holy on them. Right. You don't go to work. One thing they don't do for sure, they don't go to work. <laughs> they don't go to work for sure. But they don't keep it holy. Right. They don't participate in the things of Yahweh. They convocate, you know. Mm -hmm. They convocate in house parties, or street parties, yep. in the clubs. They convocate. But who is it that they are uplifting in their convocation? Mm -hmm. Not Yahweh. That's right. They are not uplifting Yahweh. They are not worshiping Yahweh. But they are worshiping the devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They are worshipping the devil. So Yahweh has given us this holy days. And the devil himself has his holy days too. That's right. Not his holy days, but his worship days. His pagan days. This is not holy. We should not call these days holy the blessings of Yahweh. We can't call these days holy. Christmas is not holy. It's not holy. Yahshua was not born on Christmas Day. Mm -mm. And during the same season there, during the Feast of Unleavened Bread, that's the time Yahshua was born. During that time. Around that time. Not Feast of Unleavened Bread, I'm sorry. We are getting to the feast. Which feast? Around the feast that Yahshua was born. And when you count it, nine months in the belly. And when we, we can prove it, there was the cross that, most people found it. Let me not go too deep yet. We can prove to you that Yahshua was not born on Christmas Day. Mm -hmm. And we can prove to you that Christmas Day was celebrated even before Yahshua was born. Jeremiah chapter 10. Christmas was celebrated before Yahshua was born. Now come and tell me 25th of December is the birthday of Yahshua. Mm -hmm. Now come and tell me that. Jeremiah chapter 10. Hear ye the word which Yahweh speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith Yahweh, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heathen are dismayed at them. For the custom of the people are vain. You hear that? The customs of the people are vain. For one cometh, for one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hand of the workman with the axe and they deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers and, they, and that it move not. They are upright as the palm tree but speak not. They must needs be born because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them. For they cannot do evil, neither also is it in them to do good. Mm -hmm. So these trees are Christmas trees, my dear brothers and sisters. That's right. Christmas trees. So if Yahshua was born on the 25th of December, which is Christmas Day, Xmas Day, <laughs> why in Jeremiah that they were already celebrating it? They were already celebrating it in Jeremiah. But after the book of Jeremiah came Yahshua in the flesh. Mm -hmm. So there is no way that the 25th of December That's right. is 
the birth date of Yahshua. So let's go back to Leviticus chapter 23. Leviticus chapter 23, we're going through the holy days, the holy days, the days that are set apart, the days that are holy unto man. And there we go, my dear brothers and sisters, these days are holy. Ah, uh, for whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the soul shall, the soul will I destroy from among his people. Ye, verse 31, ye shall do no manner of work, it shall be a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwelling. Forever. Throughout your generations. Not generation, not singular. Generations. Plural. Throughout your generations. In all your dwellings. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest. Ye shall afflict your soul in the ninth day of the month at even from even unto even shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. Now, something is established there. From even to even, 24 hours, sunset to sunset That's right. is the Sabbath. Established, point blank. You cannot argue that. We take it again. Verse 32. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, and ye shall afflict your souls in the ninth day. So when the sun going down on the ninth day, it has to be kept on the tenth day. But when the sun is going down on the ninth day, between evenings, the two evenings, between the introducing evening of the tenth day and the last evening of the ninth day, between these evenings, you have to keep, you have to keep the Sabbath of Yahweh. These are the Sabbath, this is a Sabbath, the day of atonement. Now, verse 33, and Yahweh spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacle for seven days unto Yahweh. Now, during that time, Yahshua was born. Okay? During that time, Yahshua was born. The seventh month. Scripture has proven it. Yahshua was born during that time. And we can prove it because we know the father of John was in the second course of his priesthood in that month. That month, the father of John, Zachariah, was the priest officiating in the second course of that month. But I say, we can't deal with everything today. Next week, we are going to deal with some. Now, when you count seven, this month, which is the seventh month, then you count six months because John was six months ahead of Yahshua. When you count six months, and then you count after six, you need three more months to give you nine months of pregnancy. When you count nine months, it comes down there. Around that time, Yahshua was born. Around that time. During the Feast of Tabernacles. So most times he would be, would be falling in October. Maybe he's an October born. <laughs> so maybe Yahshua is an October born. And we can't deny that. Hallelujah. October. Which is not even the right word. Right name. All these, all these months have pagan names. Right. We should try our best not to use them. We will be going through the months of the years also. Because we know the first month is the month of Nisan, Ebibba. And we have to use the true. If we are set apart people, 
If we are called to do worship Yahweh, we are the true worshippers. We should use the correct terms and we should not use any pagan terms. The pagan words we might be calling names of idols without we knowing. We have to be extremely careful. Very careful as the children of Yahweh. Let us come to Yahweh at the fullest, fully, and not halfway. Study to show thyself approved unto Yahweh. Verse 34, speak unto the children of Israel, saying the fifteenth day of the of this seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days unto Yahweh. So the seventh month we have the feast of trumpet, which is the first day of the seventh month. On the tenth day is the feast of atonement, where we have to atone ourselves, our souls. And on the fifteenth day is the feast of tabernacle, mm -hmm. where the children of Yahweh come together again. That's right. Tabernacle. All these holy days are days that the children of Yahweh convocate, where they come together. Holy convocation. These are festivals, feast days, days to feast, to enjoy yourself, to worship, music playing, people dancing. You had timbrel, you had trumpet, you had drums, all kinds of instruments, and eat all kinds of clean food. Hallelujah. Eat, drink, and be merry, for you know what tomorrow brings. Mm. <laughs> we have to eat and celebrate. For Yahweh is mighty. Yes. And he has set up our days. Not Christmas Day. I'm not talking about Christmas Day, Valentine's Day. You're talking about New Year's Day. Mm -hmm. And it is clear that all these things are lies. Yes. They are lies. You cannot tell me the first month of the year is January. Cannot be January. If you go out, out, you can count out is anything with eight size eight. Is opt. So October should be the if, like some people would say. Opt. This is 10 December. But if we count 10 from December and we count 12 months in the year, it will fall on April, March, April. But it depends on where the new moon falls. It depends on where the new moon falls. That's true. Verse 35. On the first day, remember, not the first day of the week, but the first day of the seven days you set apart. From the fifteenth day, it will be Feast of Tabernacles. So from that fifteenth day, fifteen to twenty-one is seven. So you set apart seven days after the fifth day, the fifteenth day. And on that fifteenth day, you count seven days and verse 45 tell you on the first day, which is the first day of the seven days you set apart. So from the 15th, on the first day shall be an holy convocation. You shall do no civil work therein. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh. And on the eighth day shall be an holy convocation unto you. And ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh. It is a solemn assembly. And ye shall do no solemn work therein. These are the feasts of Yahweh, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocation, to offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh, a burnt offering and a meal offering, a sacrifice and drink offering, everything upon this day. Beside the Sabbaths of Yahweh, and beside your gifts, and beside all your vows, and beside all your free will offerings, which ye give unto Yahweh. Also, in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep the feast unto Yahweh seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. So the Feast of Tabernacles, in the Feast of Tabernacles you have two Sabbaths. It starts with a Sabbath, and it ends with a Sabbath. 
The feast of unleavened bread. It starts with a Sabbath and it ends with a Sabbath. Seven days. Both feasts. These are the holy days. Yahweh has appointed in the season we have to keep them. Not when we want. That's right. But in the appointed time. Right. And I tell any man, tell me we shouldn't keep these days. Say it. If you say we shouldn't keep these days, you are going contrary to the word of Yahweh. Should you kill? Mm -mm. The scripture said, Thou shalt not kill. That's right. Should you ever steal? No. No. The scripture said, You shall not steal. So why take some and leave some? Should you eat swine? No. no. You should not eat swine. Don't come and tell me the feast days I should not keep it. If you tell me I shouldn't keep the feast days, tell me why I shouldn't eat swine. Mm -hmm. If I shouldn't keep the feast days, should I have any other Elohim? Mm -hmm. Should I work on the seventh day? No. Don't take some and leave some. Let us study. Let us investigate these scriptures to understand them better and for us to keep the word of Yahweh. So, seven feasts. Seven feasts. Also, we are on verse 49. Also in the 15th day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of all, of all the land, ye shall keep a feast unto Yahweh seven days. On the first day shall, uh, shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. And ye shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook. And ye shall rejoice before Yahweh, your Elohim, seven days. And ye shall keep it a feast unto Yahweh. Seven days in the year. And ye shall keep it a feast unto Yahweh. Seven days in the year. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. Ye shall celebrate it in the seventh month. It said forever. To keep time. Forever. Not temporary, but forever. Throughout all, throughout your generations, ye you shall celebrate it in the seventh month. Ye shall dwell in both seven days. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths. The general that your generations may know. That I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am Yahweh your Elohim. And Moses declared unto the children of Israel the feast days of Yahweh. So the feast days of Yahweh are what they call Passover, which is the memorial meal right now. The other one we go straight down is the feast of unleavened bread, first high day. You take seven days for feast of unleavened bread. The first day, the first feast, like we said, is passed over the fourteenth day of the first month. You keep that. Then the second, the second feast is the high day, first high day, which is the fifteenth day of the first month. Then you count seven days. You have to keep feast of unleavened bread for seven seven days. And when you reach on the seventh day of that, would be the first, the twenty-first day of that month is another high day. Then that other high day, you have to keep it holy. A holy convocation unto a Yahweh. All the children of Yahweh must come together to keep that holy day. It is a Sabbath. No work must be done on that day. Then we go down to the Feast of Trumpet. Hallelujah. The Feast of Trumpet is the first day of the seventh month. When you go to the Feast of Trumpet, the first day of the seventh month, you have to come holy convocation. Then the fifth, the fifth one, my dear brothers and sisters, is the Feast of Atonement. On the tenth day of the seventh month, you have to atone your soul where you shall not work and you shall not eat if you eat or you drink and then you do any work on that day. That soul shall be cut off according to the book of Leviticus chapter 23. Then the sixth month would be on the fifteenth day of the seventh month. 
The fifteenth day of the seventh month, you have to take seven days aside to come together. And they call that the Feast of Tabernacle. We have to tabernacle together. On that, the fifteenth day is a Sabbath day. This day you shall do no work. And you count seven days. On the twenty-first day, you end the Feast of Tabernacle. It is the last high day. You do no work on that day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you cannot tell me the scriptures lie. Seven holidays. Seven fifth days. The children of Yahweh have to keep together. Not by yourself. But together with one another. And when we do that, we will march to Zion together with each other. Hallelujah. Praise God. We are going to march to Zion together. And no man can prevent us from entering that beautiful city of Yahweh. And as we end, my dear brothers and sisters, please stand and join our voices in singing our theme song, which we are going to close with. We're marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion. Let us hear the timbrels. Let us hear the voices. Let us hear each other clap. And we're going to sing unto Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah! We are marching to Zion, the beautiful city of Yah. Praise Yah!
to Zion as we one more time sing our theme song. We march in to Zion. Hallelujah. Holy, but this is the day that you 
has created and called holy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for the word that went out, Father. I pray that it doesn't fall on deaf ears or cold hearts. I pray that the words that went out today and those that hear the words don't leave from these words the same way that they came, Father. That uh, your truth are deposited into the, uh, the souls and hearts and spirits of those who call on you, Father. Even those who don't know your name and don't know to call on you, but they're searching for you, Father. For many of us, it started with keeping your Sabbaths. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I just pray, Father, that uh, as we continue throughout the rest of the day, that we continue to keep your holy day set apart, mm -hmm. that we continue in fellowship with one another, that we continue to walk after in the footsteps of our Savior, our King, our Master, our Redeemer, Yeshua. Hallelujah. I pray these things in Yeshua's name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless you.